Welcome to this special edition of the New Stack Makers on the Road. We're here in KubeCon North America in Detroit Rock City. Discussions from the show floor with technologists giving you their expertise and insights to help you with your everyday work. KubeCon and CloudNativeCon conferences gather adopters and technologists to further the education and advancement of cloud-native computing. The vendor-neutral events feature domain experts and key maintainers behind popular projects like Kubernetes, Prometheus, Envoy, CoreDNS, Container, and more. Hi there, and welcome to another On the Road episode of the New Stack Makers podcast. We're coming to you from KubeCon plus CloudNativeCon North America here in Detroit, the Motor City. And uh, I'm your host, Heather Joslin, features editor of the New Stack. And today we're going to talk about WebAssembly, uh, what's new and what's next. It's appropriate here in Detroit. Detroit long, was long a center, been a center of innovation to talk about this new innovation in the field. Um, first, we're joined today by uh, people from two companies that are new in the space uh, of web, WebAssembly. Uh, first of all, we're joined by Bailey Hayes, a, a director at Cosmotic. Um, and uh, hi, Bailey, do you want to tell us a little bit about Cosmotic and uh, news? Sure, I, I'd love to, yeah. So I recently started at Cosmotic actually four weeks ago, so I'm pretty new to it. Uh, Cosmonic itself isn't uh, extremely new into the space. We're an open core platform as a service, and our open core is Wasm Cloud, and that's been around for three years. And uh, I guess Cosmotic has some news, right, this week about... We funding? do have some news, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, we just announced uh, we've raised our seed round at, eight, um, I believe it's 8.6 million, which is very exciting. Uh, so we're going to try to celebrate that tonight. That's terrific. And um, we're also joined by uh, Kate Goldenring of Software Engineer at Fermion Technologies. Um, and do you want to... Tell us a little bit about Fermion, and yeah. I understand you have some news as well. We also have some news, yeah. we um, On Monday was a big day for us. We uh, announced our uh, $20 million funding, um, our C day with Insight Partners, and then we also announced uh, Fermion Cloud, which is our hosted platform for running WebAssembly microservices. So it was a big day for us, and it's been a really exciting week here. I'm realizing I should have mentioned it was it's worth Ver Vertex is who our, our round was with and okay. yours was with Insight right yes yes cool. yeah and and uh, disclosure time uh, the new stack is is also owned by by Insight Partners so <laughs> so we're part of the same yeah. same uh, portfolio family um, I wanted to uh, first thing uh, before we begin I just want to say that that our sponsor for this episode is uh, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation or CNCF to its friends. And uh, we thank them for, for their sponsorship. So let's get going. Let's start with a question that some of our listeners may be, may be puzzling over at the moment. What is WebAssembly? Kate, you want to go first? Sure. I mean, there's the technical definition that it's a binary format and a runtime to execute it on. But I think more and more lately, people are asking, why should I care about WebAssembly? And I think people think of WebAssembly as kind of an evolution of where we've landed in technology. You have uh, kind of the space with VMs isolating workloads, and then you brought in containers that furthered that, that continued that isolation, but led this microservice approach. And now we're here with WebAssembly, which is bringing out this serverless paradigm. So it's kind of evolving the way that we're doing computing today in the cloud. Yeah, in a lot of ways, just to add to what Kate said, I, I think of containers as a way to virtualize the operating system and ability to run processes. Mm. With WASM, we are essentially a process, a single process, a single binary that's portable. And when you have a compilation target that's this portable, it's really great for platforms that are serverless, platforms like Cosmonic that let us distribute WASM um, globally and at scale and on your laptop or your phone or in a server, and, and that's what we're so excited about it. That's terrific. And it, it can be run on uh, like many, many languages, like you can work in your favorite language. It, it, yeah, that is part, a big, big part of, of WASM is that it's a compilation target, and it's developed as an open standard as part of the W3C. And so that means that many different languages can support it. At WASM Day, we saw a ton of different languages announcing new support. It was, I believe, .NET, Python, PHP even. Yeah. Uh, gosh, am I and missing Java. one? Java. Java, Java yeah. was a big one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so it's, a, it's, a, it's, a bright, you know, it's a bright beginning for, for, for WASM. 
Um, and WebAssembly, or WASM to its friends, is uh, only about five years old, and yet a lot of people in the industry are saying it's, you know, it's going to be a game changer. You talked a little bit about that already. Like, what if I'm a developer, um, especially one who works on, um, you know, I work on, uh, deployed to a number of different platforms. Like, what is, how is this, how might this change how I do my day-to-day -day work? Yeah, you know, a lot of people think that WASM is this maybe up and coming thing or it's this totally new thing that's out there in the future. And I think it's one of technology's best kept secrets because you're using it today all over and many of the applications that you use day to day, Zoom, Google Meet, uh, Prime Video, I mean, it really is everywhere. The thing that's going to change for developers is that this will be their compilation target in their build file. Our goal, uh, developing the standards and moving them forward for WASM and WebAssembly. I prefer to say WASM. I'm just going to stick yeah, with that for the rest of it. <laughs> uh, with be, we're, it's a casual podcast. Let's just yeah, uh, yeah, let's let's go with WASM. Chill. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So with WASM, developers shouldn't need to know necessarily that uh, it's their compilation target. Like you don't technically know that you had a .exe or .dylib or whatever when you did your build as a dev, but what you do know is that you're now able to move that WASM module anywhere in any cloud. The same one that you built on your desktop that might be on Windows can go and run on an ARM Linux server. And I think I think it's not just the portability that's exciting about WebAssembly. I think so. The CNCF did their first community WebAssembly survey because they kind of wanted to answer why do we care about WebAssembly, and they asked how are you using this? Why are you excited about it? And um, even though WebAssembly was made for the web, the number one response, it, it was around a little over 60% said serverless. And then it mm -hmm. said um, the edge, and then it said web development, and then it said IoT, and the use cases just keep going. And that's because uh -huh. it is this incredibly powerful portable target that you can put in all these different use cases. It's secure, it has instant startup time. And so WASM Day on Monday was just all these people coming together trying to move this technology forward. Um, and the part that we're excited about for Mion is really building up the developer experience to get people going with it faster so that you can just immediately start using it and experience the technology mm -hmm. because it makes us excited. So we want to make everyone else excited about it too. I was also at WASM Day and there was talk about use cases. What do you feel are, are some of the most immediately um, promising use cases, like the things that, you know, the technology's there and it could, it could really help with? I mean. Yeah, I think there's there's two different sides there. It's there's the web side of uh, WebAssembly, and you have companies like Figma that are already like excelling in that. Yeah. And then uh, we're more interested in kind of the server side and uh, the use case there that I see is making it so that developers only have to focus on business logic. So it's making your cloud applications um, easier for developers to make and uh, execute and manage. Um, so just a better evolution of the way that we do computing. Um, I wouldn't say one specific industry in mind that I, I can touch to. Can you, Bailey, can you point yeah, to? Yeah, I can give you a specific example, but I think the key point there is that there's just a plethora of cool use cases that are out there. Uh -huh. But my one specific example was developed by Intel and BMW partnership where they added an ML inferencing capability provider to WASM Cloud, which is mm -hmm. the open core piece of Cosmonic. Uh -huh. So seeing things in the ML space is really exciting. I, I also am interested interested in research and I find WASM to be an excellent target for them because that can be a way to have reproducible research. So mm -hmm. there's just so many different areas and industries that we can target. Yeah. Uh, one, one thing that I find interesting about both of your company's tools, they're built to run on Nomad rather than Kubernetes. Can you, can you tell us a little bit about what the advantage is of that choice? So Nomad is really great as a job scheduler, mm -hmm. and WASM gives us a lot of the portability that we need to distribute. With Kubernetes, it is orchestrating containers. Mm -hmm. So for us, we wanted something that was as minimal and simple as possible. Uh -huh. Kubernetes isn't exactly Not, known no. for being the simplest piece of software. Uh, so with Nomad, we were able to really quickly iterate and have a very tiny footprint for our paths. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really love that uh, that technology. And we gave a talk about it at HashiConf, which I believe just became available. So uh, I, you know, if you want to dig into that a little bit deeper, check that out. Yeah, yeah. we can link to that in the Yeah, and to build off that, I think both uh, Cosmonic, so Taylor Thomas at Cosmonic and the folks on our team looked at trying to do it with Kubernetes. And it, it took a lot of time. We work, we're working on this project called 
called Presslet. And then we shifted to Nomad and were able to do what we wanted to do in a few weeks when it was taking us months with Presslet. But at the same time, um, just last Friday, Microsoft announced that you can now run Spin, which is our developer tooling for running WebAssembly mm -hmm. microservices on AKS. So Microsoft is providing a way to run WebAssembly microservices on Kubernetes. Um, we're going the Nomad way because we were able to get that going. But um, both are great schedulers for getting the job done and getting people running WebAssembly in the cloud. Yeah, our PaaS runs on Nomad. Wasm Cloud itself can target Kubernetes and run really well on Kubernetes uh -huh. and OpenStack and many other different environments. So it's not exclusive just to that. And Wasm itself, we <laughs> should be clear, our, our platforms chose Nomad, but Wasm can run anywhere no. on any server side. One thing that um, I, I wanted to ask about is, is which was discussed in the, at Wasm is, is Work. Am I pronouncing that right? The work, yeah. Work, yes. Oh, I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. 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 So, was that it? Warg. Warg. Okay. okay there so, are worlds too, yeah, and that's sorry. also another <laughs> yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. We can talk, about, talk yeah. about worlds as well. So I'll talk about my my favorite one, right? Because I, I got to talk about Warg. Yeah. Uh, it was an announcement. So the Bytecode Alliance got together. We. It's really actually our first SIG, which is a special interest group, mm. and. The Bytecode Alliance Charter is to build a software foundation for WASM. Mm -hmm. And whenever you're trying to build an ecosystem for any language or technology, one of the first things that you need is a package registry or just a registry in general. If you're, if you're distributing OCI artifacts, you probably don't think of that as a package registry. Uh, so since we're at Kubernetes, um, I also am really excited with Warg because it's really a protocol and a set of APIs so that we can slot it into existing ecosystems. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think of it as like us trying to pave over existing technologies and that's really not the case. The, the purpose of Warg is to be able to slot right in mm -hmm. so that you continue working in your current developer environment and experience and using the packages that you're used to, but get all of the advantages of the component model, which is this new specification we've been working on in W3C. Yeah, and to kind of zoom out of that a little, I think the whole idea behind Warg and the component model and SIG registries is how do we make it easier for people to share code and reuse it with WebAssembly, mm -hmm. and I think yeah. That was another thing that came out of the CNCF community survey is that 30, around 30% 30 of people wanted better code reuse. And yeah. that's a sign of a more mature ecosystem. So having something like Warg is going to help everyone who's involved in the server side web assembly space. And then worlds. What is okay. <laughs> define? Worlds, okay. So the component model has a lot of cool, but also moving parts happening right now. It's, it's a very new uh, standard that we've been developing. And a world file is a way of defining well, your world, your environment that you're running in. And one way to think of it is like a dot profile, but for WASM and uh -huh. for a component. And so it tells me what types of capabilities I need for my WASM module to run successfully. And the runtime can read that and give me the right stuff. So if I'm running in the browser, I'm going to want something that knows how to call the HTTP fetch API and all yeah. those types of things. But if I'm running uh, on a really tiny Arduino that d has a very tiny memory and, and FS, then it's going to be really smart about maybe running things virtualized. So um, Luke Wagner, he called this uh, virtual platform layering. Okay. Uh, but a world file. It's yeah. a, it's another file <laughs> that you need for to run your application. <laughs> and another W name in the WebAssembly ecosystem. So. We're so bad about that. <laughs> Alliteration for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, it, uh, what's a uh, what what are you see are some of the, the things that I mean it's a, still a very new field. What do you see as some of the big challenges that still need to be worked out? There was mention at Wasm Day about debugging needs to get better. Yeah, uh, like Kate mentioned, that was one of the big things in the survey, the CNCF survey that folks wanted, which was improved tooling. Uh, Warg will help with that, but the, yeah. it doesn't just stop there. Um, you would want tooling, like say if you're developing in Rust, you want something that works with Rust tool called Cargo. Mm -hmm. That's one very specific example, but if we had more tools around Cargo so that it made it really easy to debug the WASM module itself rather than a native Rust binary, that would be really killer to add. Mm -hmm. uh, can you think of a few other things that we need? The developer tooling in general, like you can think about how there was containers and then Docker came up with a series of instructions that everyone knows, Docker mm -hmm. build, Docker run, et cetera. And so building out developer tools that do that and on our side it's spin build, spin up, spin deploy and then on 
cosmonic side equally, like being able to quickly deploy applications um, and get that going in production. And so I think it is the developer tooling. It's making it so that people can um, quickly build applications with standard APIs and don't have to worry about with bind gen all the time and, and just get going faster. Yeah, I just realized we didn't talk about Docker's announcement uh, at WASM yes, Days. Yeah. Yeah. So that's going to be a huge improvement for the developers that are already used to using like Docker Desktop. Docker has added WASM as a runtime that they can target. So unlike uh, having to have a Linux container or a Windows container runtime, now we have a WASM runtime that can run through your normal Docker interface. So developers don't necessarily have to learn new tools to be able to get started with WASM. Yeah, and I think part of that also, it's not just that they're actually doing things with community, they also join the Bytecode Alliance, which <laughs> is um, the organization that we're all trying to work together to build out what WebAssembly on the server means, and them formally joining that is also a big step of them seeing that WebAssembly and containers do work next to each other, and we're really just trying to all make it a better cloud experience. Great, well, um, this, has been, this has been really great conversation, and I'm excited as you know someone is in this field. I'm very excited about WebAssembly and its promise, and I thank you very much for, for joining us. So this is Bailey from Cosmotic, ba Bailey Hayes from Cosmotic, Kate Goldenring from Fermion Technologies. Thank you for joining us today. Both Thanks, of you. Heather. That thank you. Great. This was Thanks, fun. Bailey. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, thank you, everyone, for joining us. I'm uh, on this episode of uh, the New York Newstack Makers podcast on the road here in Detroit, the Motor City, at uh, KubeCon. And uh, Thank you. For, we also want to thank our sponsor, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and we'll see you next time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.